it's my Paula Barbie here. Now, I wanted to talk about a really important uh, subject today. Um, I guess, borderline personality disorder and the interactions that your parents can have with you and how they can affect you, even into adulthood. Um, and I think I've been experiencing this really a lot lately. It's sort of like it's become so clear. It's an amazing feeling when you can sort of take away the subjectivity and sort of let go of your personal opinion and view a situation, um, you know, sort of even detach from emotion, to just view it in a really objective way. Um, and I think a lot of things, you know, really come to light because of that. You know, you will really see the way the borderline manifests in your life. Um, and I think, you know, that clarity has just been so empowering lately. It's, it's been so insightful. And I am grateful for that. What I am not grateful for is living with tigers. I mean, I think that's the part that people don't understand is that borderline personality disorder is such a fear of being attacked. It's, it's like living in fear. And why are we, we so scared? What are we so afraid of? I mean, borderline is like being born without a skin. We don't have thick skin. In fact, we have no skin. So any, any, any negativity just seems to just like be absorbed into us, which is really hard because it's difficult to let that go. It just seems to like circulate around inside you. Anything anyone says to you really, really does stab you pretty hard. It, it attacks these core beliefs that you have about yourself, which can be completely and utterly, utterly terrifying. Now, I was thinking about how I could explain this to my mother um, the other day, and I came up with this tiger analogy, because really, that's how I feel. That's how terrified I actually feel. There is no safe place. I haven't had a safe home in a really long time. The only place that has been safe, or the, the only places that have been safe to me for a really long time um, are the psych ward, my best friend's house and you know the bathroom or the shower um, or the bath because you know I guess I've never been attacked in those places they're safe places tigers aren't lurking in those places now I was gonna do a video on this the other day and then um, something happened yesterday and I thought you know what it's really time to do this video because suddenly the bathroom was not such a safe place and I mean oh, how ridiculous is this so I mean, I was like followed around. I was being stalked by by the tiger, and they were roaring, you know, roaring at me. You know, this tiger was was quite aggressive towards me and quite persistent in their stalking of me. Everywhere I turned, they were there, and they were really in my face. Like they were getting closer and closer. And the more interactions like this you have in such a short space of time really is like that, that building anxiety that you have of a tiger, that flight or fight response. And I try and flight, but I guess when you're stuck in that situation, like most animals, when, you are, when you're caged, when there is no escape from it, then I think you sort of end up fighting, you end up snapping. And it really is misinterpreted by the people around you. And most people don't take the time um, to understand where you're actually coming through, coming from. Um, and I think like some people are just not capable of understanding. So I thought, how can I explain this in a way that she could comprehend? And I think honestly, it's quite apparent that my father, for example, just doesn't want to understand whatever the reasons that he personally has for that. And I think my mother is just not capable of understanding. Um, yet I try, yet I persist, yet I calmly try and open a dialogue about it. I try and inform them. I try and express myself. And it is like hitting my head on a brick wall. So here I am thinking that the shower is a safe place because it's been a relatively safe place for like the last 25 years. I'm literally having a shower. The door opens and it starts with... Don't take too long in the shower because, you know, there's, there's other people that need to have a shower. Okay, fair call. I hadn't spent that long in the, long in the shower. I was in the process of washing the conditioner out. I was going to get out of the shower any second. But then the tiger 
seem to be obsessed with feeding in this in the shower and it was just this constant dialogue like there was no break it was like one topic to another and one thing that really annoys me like i think um i have paint in my hair so i must have got some paint like on on the on the um basin or something before i hopped in the shower obviously i was going to clean it up i wasn't aware that i put it there so then it obviously starts with how did you get paint here why did you put paint there and i think this assumption that really frustrates me that really annoys me and i think has no basis you know that it, it's founded upon but it's it's just something the way my parents have always thought of me it's like for example paint on the basin apparently i've deliberately done that apparently i've deliberately gone out of my way to put paint on the basin just to make my mother's life hell no like accidents happen reading into my intentions like i do not have ill intentions and i am really sorry i'm just as frustrated with myself that i am messy that i'm clumsy that these things happen but carrying on like i deliberately walked a little bit of grass into the house i deliberately spilled some water on the floor i mean like whatever it is it's not a deliberate act and being accused like accusations are exactly what i'm talking about when when being attacked by this tiger and it compounds it's a compounding form of trauma so for like three minutes i'm having a shower and it's just bark 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 constantly and then she goes to the point where she opens the shower door and she's like let me have a look at your sunburn oh you shouldn't have got sunburned oh blah 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 and it's like get out Get out of my safe zone. Get out of my shower. Get out of my personal space. Like, you have no boundaries. And I find it really hard as a borderline and just a person in general to assert my boundaries. Because I was brought up in a world where boundaries didn't exist. Boundaries were only applicable for people who deserved them. And apparently, I didn't deserve boundaries. I was constantly told that I did not have the right to boundaries that I was not allowed to have boundaries because I just I didn't deserve them and as an adult that has really crippled me throughout my whole life that has been really hard whether it be people touching me without my consent anything that anyone does to me that makes me feel uncomfortable I don't feel like I have a right to stop them to speak out about it I don't know how I've never learned how to do that and that is really, really terrifying. And I, I don't understand why I have this inner dialogue of like, I deserve to be made to feel uncomfortable, that I don't have a right to speak up and, and, and confront people who are doing things that make me feel uncomfortable. And I think certainly it's, it's that upbringing. And I think that's been quite dangerous in my life. And it wasn't until, I guess, some people pointed out the things that I let people do to me that really, really terrified me. I guess really made me see that, okay, well, maybe some of these things that these people do to me aren't right. That they're just, that, that you know, I'm allowed to feel uncomfortable about these things. And I am allowed to speak out about them. And I am allowed to say, whoa, hold on a minute. You can't do that to me. You can't treat me in that way. So, to anyone out there who has tigers in their life, especially the ones you can't run from, whether it be situationally, right now, I don't have any other option. But, it's hard. And those tigers are real. They're not fantasy. They're not made up in your mind. They are a real threat to Borderlands. And I wish more people really understood that. And you are worthy you do deserve the same rights as anyone else in this society and you are allowed boundaries working out what your boundaries are and having clear boundaries and sticking to those boundaries is probably the hardest thing that you will ever do until you get to the point where you're trying to enforce them but the more often you begin to enforce them the easier it does get so you deserve to be happy 
You deserve to feel safe. And I think getting to that point is really difficult. Working out what you need to feel safe, the places that you feel safe, and the people that make you feel unsafe, the situations that make you feel unsafe, the triggers that you do have, whether it be so that you can avoid them or so that you can identify them. And I think just simply identifying them and being observant of them is kind of part of that distress tolerance and sitting with your emotions. So I um, I think it's an important part about being borderline. And I think it's something that we all need to work on. It's something that I'm currently working on. It's hard. I think communicating this to people is even harder. I just, it's, it's really frustrating that people don't understand. And I don't expect you to understand, but I expect you to be tolerant. And I expect you to be understanding. Because I think you don't have to understand something to be understanding. You can be compassionate. You can be empathetic. You know, you can just accept it. Accept that that someone's pain is real, that the way they experience the world is real, that their feelings are real, that their thoughts are real, and that the way that you affect them and the way they communicate that is the honest truth. Whether or not that's what your intentions were, it doesn't change the fact that the way they feel about it is, is invalid. No one has the right to tell you that what you think and feel is wrong. No one has the right to tell you what you think and feel, especially, and no one has the right, I guess, to deny it when you're sitting there saying, hey, this is what I think and feel. That is what a lifetime of invalidation is like. So if you feel the same, um, if you have any ideas on how I can communicate this with her and with them, um, definitely write that in the comments below. Um, Because I'd love to know your thoughts. And I think sharing this information, sharing the way that people cope with it, is really, really important. So please comment. um, And if you like my stuff, subscribe. Because I'm uploading so many videos at the moment. So I'd really appreciate that. Um, Feel free to share. You know, the more people that have discussions about this, the better. So stay tuned for my next video, guys. Much love.